Hi, this is Dave, and today we are going to be taking a look at a new version of a game that came out a couple years ago called Mi Tierra. Uh, this is now going to be Mi Tierra Nueva Era, and it's uh, an updated version of the original game, and hoping that it will see a wider distribution than the original. What this game is, is a farming game. It's a worker placement game for two to six players. It takes place in the Chilean countryside, and each player is going to be managing their farm. They're going to be able to do different things in order to amass the most wealth. Uh, we're going to be able to plant crops and we're going to be able to use factories to turn them into different second and third level products that derive from them. We're going to have animals that we will raise to be able to get products from them. We're also going to be able to train horses and compete in rodeos for additional money. We also have products that we can sell at both markets in the countryside and the city side. So let's take a look at this game and how it's played and I'll come back and I'll share my thoughts. All right, here we have a prototype for Mi Tierra Nueva Era set up for three players. So we have the main game board here, and I have the three individual player farm boards off to the side. And uh, let me quickly go over the different components that come in the game. And again, this is a prototype, so it's not reflecting the final product, but you will get an idea of what is going on. And first, we have this game board, which is set up in front of us, and it's divided up into to, uh, three different sections where things are going to be going on. We have the countryside over here, where we will be able to gather different animals or crops that we will be able to plant on our farm boards or we can also build in fences to keep livestock and that's all going to take place here we can also even hire an additional worker uh, over on this side we have our city area and here we're going to be able to uh, work uh, our way to get water to irrigate our fields we can get horses and then we have these different factories that we can take some of the goods that we produce off of our farm over here and turn them into additional products down here so uh, for example we have apples and grapes and uh, wheat we can take those and turn them into different products for example we can turn that wheat into flour and we can turn we can milk our cows and we can uh, get milk we can also shear our sheep and get wool. And then later on, we can take combinations of these different products and turn them into other things. For example, if we have milk from our cows and we have eggs from our chickens, we can in turn turn that into a cake. And so we have second and third level products that we will be able to produce all over in this city area of the board. And then finally, we have this market area down at the bottom. We have our, uh, this is kind of our countryside market, and we have a city market, which we'll be able to sell goods. And at higher player counts, there's also a black market that players can, in turn, uh, choose to sell some of their items as well. And then we have this rodeo down here, uh, where we can show off some of our horsemanship skills. So that's on the main player board. We also have a money track that's going to go around the board and it ends up over here at 100. So it's going to keep track of our pesos. We have a space that's going to determine our uh, player order and that's going to have to do with how much money we have. And so at the start of the game, uh, the first player is green, starts off with 10 pesos and then 11 and 12. So whoever starts off is going to have the least amount of money. And then we also have this round tracker. And if you see this A and B, this is going to uh, determine certain things uh, in the game that are going on. So uh, for example, we are going to have an event that's going to take place at the beginning of each round. And depending upon if we're in the A or B part of the game, that's the side of the card that we're going to resolve. And then also we have these industrial improvements that I'll talk about in a little bit, that we have some that start off at the game and then there's going to be other ones that come in. And then down here for our markets, we also have uh, A and B market cards. And so that's going to uh, come into play. And then also if you see these other little spaces with the rodeos at rounds three five and seven we will have a, a rodeo that is going to ensue and we will be able to compete for money and those are the payoffs 15 20 and 25 pesos all right so that's the stuff that's going on on the main game board and then we also have our individual player boards 
Over here we have the house. When we start off with three players, we will have four workers at the house. And then we have a bunch of different spaces in our field where we will be able to um, either fence off areas to house livestock, or we're going to be able to plant crops in our fields and uh, eventually be able to produce goods off them. Really important, if you see this, this is an irrigation system. Water is crucial in this game. And in order for a field to be able to produce, it's going to have to be irrigated irrigated first and then we're going to have to assign a worker to work that field so something that really makes this uh, stand out as a really really awesome farming game is having this uh, irrigation system involved and again we have a one area that's going to start off we'll be able to house three animals over here all of the same species we cannot uh, mix and match like a, uh, for example a Noah's Ark we wouldn't be able to have all this assortment of animals together each one is going to have to have their own separate fenced in area and we have a section over here two different barns where we will be able to uh, train horses in order to uh, in order to increase their levels and make them uh, more competitive in the rodeos. And then finally on each player board, there are going to be three spaces for us to have uh, industrial improvements to make our farms better. All right, so those are the different things that we have going on in the game. Uh, and so what's going to happen now, uh, I'm going to show you the different sections of what's going to happen. And uh, what, what typically will happen is all the players are going to place all of their workers uh, on the spaces and then we'll go through and activate them. And they activate them in a special way. So let me go ahead and uh, have all the workers placed and then we'll go ahead and um, activate uh, them and I'll explain what each of them do. Now one thing to note before I go ahead and uh, through the magic of video have all the workers come out is that each of these wagon wheel spaces is a space where we can place workers. And if you notice most of the spaces have two spaces available. And um, we could potentially place two of our own workers there. If nobody does that we would be able to do that action twice. So those are the different spaces that are on the uh, on the game board, and then also on our player boards, we will have spaces to uh, be able to activate as well if we sp place a worker on a field that's planted or on an area where we are uh, going to be uh, uh, training our horses. So let me go ahead and do that, okay, and we'll so be right back. We have gone ahead and. Uh, placed our workers for this first round and I'm going to go through each of these different spaces uh, in here and then eventually I'll talk about the other ones. But um, we're going to start off with the green player and we will activate each of these particular uh, sections in order and they're all numbered. And so uh, we'll see down here uh, that both uh, green and blue, this is going to activate this forest place. They're going to choose uh, a fencing spot and place it on their farm. And so the green player is going to decide to take one of these and place it along the bottom. So now we have room for do two different species of animals. Once we cover this up though, these two fields cannot produce uh, things anymore. Uh, we cannot produce crops there. The blue player, on the other hand, is going to take theirs and is going to decide that they are not interested in training horses, and so we are going to um, cover this up right here, and we're going to, um, this player is going to go more into the uh, approach of producing livestock. Probably not a good thing, but that's what he's going to do. Uh, the second one, Orange is going to be able to produce, uh, get two seeds because he's got them both there. And so the uh, Orange player is going to choose to go into uh, gathering up some wheat, which we will then place on the field immediately. Uh, this one will be able to be irrigated right here, and so eventually we'll be able to produce there. And uh, the second one, we are also going to produce uh, wheat again. So we'll choose a second wheat field and we're going to place this on the field and maybe I'll go down here. Once we place wheat in a, a place a crop in a field, it can't be moved. So we've done that. Number three, we come down here. Nobody is getting any cows. So we look at that and we go over to the fourth one. Green player is going to um, get some sheep. And so what is going to happen is we're going to roll a die and whatever number that comes up, that's how many sheep that we get. So... We get a three, we are going to be able to take three sheep and we can place them onto our uh, board. And now each fenced in area can hold in three sheep. Now, 
Uh, one thing to note, if we decided that we didn't want to put all of them there, any of the sheep that we did not put in there, we could slaughter and we would take a meat card. Uh, so if we decided over here, you know what, I'm only going to take two sheep and the other one we're going to turn into meat, that's fine. I'm going to take a meat card and we would put this into our hand over here. And if we had taken more sheep than we had uh, room for, for example, another turn, if we got more sheep, we could uh, turn those into meat as well. So that was a good role, being able to be productive in getting two sheep and then also... Uh, being able to uh, to um, turn one into meat as well. So that was a good move for him. We come down here and uh, both the blue and the orange players, they're each going to take a roll to see how many chickens they get. Um, the orange player is going to get one chicken so that'll go over on his board over here. And the blue player is also going to get one and they'll place it down here as well. So those are the different spaces we can see uh, here. We've been able to get some fencing areas. We were able to get some crops uh, to plant. And then we also have different animals. One last space over here, which we did not go to, is to be able to hire an additional worker. And for example, if this worker had come over here instead and decided he wanted to hire additional one, uh, we would have to pay two um it'd be two pesos times the number of available workers out there so we have three workers available so green would have to pay six pesos in order to take him back so uh the longer that these guys are out here and the less there are the cheaper they become and if two players had gone there for example if orange had gone down and decided to get a worker you'd both pay the six pesos it wouldn't be uh one paying more and then less so that's uh so those are the spaces that are over here on this country side market and uh, so that's going to activate first this is sector number one sector number two is going to be um we have a space up here in order to get water. And so eat both the orange and blue players, each of them are going to roll the die and see how many water they're going to get. Each, this one, uh, orange is going to get one, and then blue is going to get one. So they each take one water, and they'll immediately place them on their game board. So orange, we will place this down here in this space. And now this wheat field is irrigated as well. Actually, what I probably should have done, and I'm not going to change it now, was I should have placed that wheat field there. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll place it here, and I'll explain to you uh, why in a little bit. But typically, once you place it, it cannot be moved. And then down here, we'll go ahead and we'll place this here. So we're building this irrigation system, and this is important because in order for crops to produce, the fields need to be irrigated. Okay. Uh, so that's the water mill. And one thing is if all of these water cubes are taken, there's going to be a drought. A drought will ensue, and then each player off their player boards would have to remove one of these and put it back into the, uh, the water mill supply. So really have to be managing our water. The next space over here that we have is a space for what's called industrial improvements. Now, nobody went over there, but if you place a worker, you have different spaces you can place them. You usually place them over two, uh, two spaces, or we can try to get, we can get one of these improvements. So we have a choice whether we put it, um, we can place this worker where it covers two over this space. We can put um, covering two over there between these two, between these two, or in the center, all four. And what we would do is pay one peso, what, however it resolves, wherever we're at, we would pay one peso and get our choice of one of the improvements. So, for example, if this one was here, we would uh, be able to have our choice. If we paid two pesos, for example, we would have uh, this, and we would put this on our board, and then we would have this improvement now where if we have three chickens, we're going to produce uh, one egg. And so each turn that is going to uh, automatically do that, we won't have to send a worker over to go pick the chickens. We're just going to have this industrial technology that's going to be there. And then later on, those they'll have new ones that come out there. Uh, this next space over here, which we will be able to get workers, so the green player decide or get horses, I'm sorry, so the green player decides to take a horse, and they're going to put it over in their training barn over on the zero space. And eventually what's going to happen is if we place a worker there, we will be able to discard apples that we produce in order to produce... Um, level up our horses and make them uh, more competitive if they go in the rodeos. 
So the next spaces that we have over here are some of these small factories. If we had sent a worker over here, for example, uh, down. So if we go and place a worker on this particular space, uh, we would be able to pay five pesos and we would be able to convert some of our goods into the next level product. So for example here, if we turned in three wheat, we would be able to make uh, one flour in return or three grapes and we would be able to have one wine. So that's on that particular factory. Now over here, this animal origins one, when we activate this, uh, we pay the five pesos. If we have two cows, we're going to be able to get one milk. Uh, if we have three um, sheep, we'll be able to get wool. And if we have three chickens, we'll be able to get one egg. Now, the interesting thing is here with the animals, uh, in order to get these products, we don't have to kill these animals. We just have to have them there. They're going to produce stuff for us as long as we have uh, this um, as long as we use this particular factory, it's like we're taking milk off of the farm and then we're actually having it processed. We're having us, uh, like our workers would, for example, shear the sheep and we'd have these products. These animals stay on the farm, so as long as we have them, we're going to be able to produce them as long as we send somebody to the factory. Now, we've got two other factories down here that are going to produce uh, some really cool goods. So, for example, if we turn in uh, four of these for wool on this particular space we're going to get 35 pesos in pay and we're also going to get a vest in return uh, here if we have some eggs and we have flour we're also going to get 35 pesos and we also have created this dessert so that's in that particular factory this one over here if we have milk and flour we're going to get 35 in a cake and then if we have this fruit and wine we're going to get 35 and we're going to make what's called chicha and so uh, this is where we will be able to produce level three goods. And so this is going to happen a little bit later on in the game. We'll be able to send our workers over there. Once these have activated, then we would go over and activate our uh, our farm our player boards. And so if we see on the uh, well, we'll go to the green player because he was first. And uh, what's going to happen is we've got an irrigated field and he's placed a worker there. What's going to happen is he is going to produce one apple. And so we take this apple resource card and we place it over on the side and he has that. Now one thing that I should have noted, noted before was at the beginning of the game we resolve, or the beginning of the round we would resolve an event card. And this particular one, since we're in the A, is going to allow each player to have their choice of one of those resources and it's not something that you would take and plant in the field it is going to be a card that you would take and put into your hand and so that's where that other apple came from so we had done that uh, down here there was nobody that had played anything on their boards and the second thing that we have are the blue player would do the same thing they would produce uh, they would produce apples as well and so we would do any other things. If we had uh, placed a worker over on this uh, training section here, we would be able to discard uh, one apple in order to uh, increase his level. So if we did that, we would discard, we'd return one, and then this apple would move, this uh, horse would move up to a level one. I'm sorry, it would go from zero to a one. Now, one of the other things that we could do is if, if we discarded two apples and also our water token, we could do that thing twice and we can double uh, level that particular horse. But right now, he is a level one. So once we do anything on our farm board, uh, we'll have those actions. And then finally, we would resolve if anybody had gone down to the market. And uh, they would start off with the first player. And on their way down, they would be able to make transactions. And so they would have uh, their choice of things that they wanted to do. And they would take those cards and put them in front of them for points. Um, and so, for example, if we had gone over here, we would have this transaction where we would be able to sell up the four grapes and get seven pesos per one. Same thing with these different fruits here. Uh, the other space, then, if we had gone to the black market, they would get a chance to sell their goods. And then, finally, uh, we have over in this particular space, if we had workers come over to the city market, if we had done, this is a one-time thing, if they had done this, actually this is where they would take the cards and it would go away, but these give you big payoffs if you sell in groups. So two grapes and a wool is going to give you uh, 20 pesos. You'd be able to do that. And then finally what we have is um, our uh, rodeo. This is going to only activate uh, 
it will be at least three times in the game. There are some events that will come up that will trigger a uh, an additional rodeo. But what happens is players can choose to have their uh, have their horses compete, and what it's going to go upon is the level of their horses, and whoever has the highest level is going to win the rodeo. Uh, however, whoever wins the rodeo, their horse gets sent back to the reserve, and everybody else that competed, their horses go down one level. And so you have this additional competition to get some money that's in there. And in this game over here, blue players really not interested in doing that. So. You have a lot of different things that are going on in this particular game uh, that really makes uh, for an interesting experience. And so now what would happen is after we have done all this stuff, there's going to be this maintenance phase where all of the workers are going to be returned back to their houses. Any of these cards that are going to be in the bottom row of this market are going to be removed. So these are gone. Uh, if there's an arrow on it, it's going to slide down, and then we will use, since we're still going to be an A, we're going to fill in the market with new market cards in this particular space. Uh, over here, any of these that were not purchased will come out, and we will place four new ones uh, that will come out. So we have new improvements that will be able to be... Uh, placed uh, over here for players to try to uh, improve their farms and again we're going to be using the A's so we have this so we have that particular space there we would move over uh, to the round counter we will have a new event and then the other thing that's going to happen is depending upon how much money we have then the player order is going to change and we will adjust it right here so whoever has the least amount of money will be first in turn order and so on and so forth and so uh, then we just continue on we'll have the next event and we would resolve this event whatever this is going to be place all of our workers do all of our different things and uh, we're going to continue to build up our our farms building up our different crops different systems here now uh, one thing that i want to talk about since we're in a further round and i talked about this um this uh placing our fields and having irrigation and stuff if we choose to place a worker on our farm in order to produce crops um, if we chose, we could place it on one field or between two. If we place it here, um, and there's two different goods, uh, we have our choice of which one is going to produce. However, if I placed a worker here and I'm producing between the same goods, each one of them going to pr produce the same. So I'd be able to get two uh, wheat there. And so that would be really, really good for this particular uh worker or this farm to be able to get two more wheat because we already have three and then the way that this would work is uh, once we have this production this particular section gets activated we would go on to this next one well we would have um, actually what we would have to wait uh, for another turn but once this produces on the following turn we could go over here and we could start trading in some of our wheat and producing flour and so that's going to be uh, a strategy there of trying to produce these second and third level goods. We also have more of the animals that we can continue to work with and all these different things. So uh, overall, I just wanted to give you an idea of what these different sections can do. And then as players build up their farm boards, we'll have different things that will go on. We have, again, this one here. If As long as he's got three chickens, we're automatically going to be producing an egg. And so that's going to be important. Once you get past three industrial improvements, if you purchase another one, you can just place it over and replace one. You just place it over it. And so, uh, again, keeping in mind, too, that uh, when we start having to uh, remove some of these... Uh, Water things is going to have to come from the furthest out in the system, too, as well. So if we have something all the way out here, uh, we're going to have to remove this. We can't break the chain there of, of our irrigation. And so uh, lots of different things that are going on in the game. I uh, just wanted you to get an idea of me, Tierra. All right, and uh, stay tuned, and I'll share my thoughts. Thanks. All right, so you got a chance to see the Mi Tierra Nueva Era played, and uh, just wanted to share a few thoughts with you. First of all, uh, this game, uh, I really like the art style that's in here. It has a South American flair to it, uh, especially. You know, in this box uh, here, um, this has uh, the original artwork from the original game, and so this is what they sent the prototype in. There's going to be uh, a new box art when it comes out. Uh, 
And I really like the theme of this uh, game. And uh, one of the things uh, that it holds a little bit near and dear to my heart is that we sponsor a child from Chile uh, through Compassion International. So it's really kind of uh, um, a little bit closer to home and how that feels. And so I think that that's really, really neat. Uh, for us and uh, we get into this game and I am going to say right up front that this is probably one of the best uh, farming simulator games that I have played out there. Now I love games like Agricola and stuff like that but you're spending so much time being uh, pressured on trying to feed your animals and trying to develop things um, and it's cool you've got some different improvements you can make there but you get into a game like this and it, it really encompasses this whole farming system because you have your farm and you're going out to the countryside and you're going to uh, be able to essentially get livestock from your neighbors to start off some of your own stuff. And so, uh, you know, you roll the die and it's a little bit random as to what you're going to get back. But you know what? It kind of simulates this negotiation that you're making with your neighbors. Okay, you know, let me get some sheep from you, you know, and later on maybe we can work something out. And so, so you have that that's going on. And then you have this diversity that you can start doing on your farm. You can choose to uh, start fencing in different areas to have uh, to be able to house your livestock if you want to go that route. You can choose to uh, produce different crops and you're placing them on the field. And placement is going to be uh, key and strategic because when you go to place your workers to work the fields, uh, you want to be able to maximize how much stuff that you can get. So you have these really, really neat things that you can do straight up on the farm. Now, one of the things that's most awesome about this game is this whole thing with the water and having to have the, the fields irrigated because if they're not irrigated, they don't produce. If you put a worker on there and you don't have water there, you just wasted an action. But it's, it's really, really crucial and, and really important as to how much water is important for uh, crop production in actual farming. So I think that they capture that essence perfectly in this game. And I like the fact that, you know what, when the water is gone, there's a drought and bad things are going to happen. And so, uh, so the game, I think, is really, really smart, and it's designed that way. I also like in the events that sometimes bad things can happen in there as well. So uh, the game is not always going to be friendly. It's always not uh, you know, clear skies and uh, great weather to grow different things, and uh, markets are not always favorable. So you've got a lot of different things that are really bringing things into uh, a realistic perspective. So <clears throat> once we get into the... The city side production is where this game really, really starts to separate itself from uh, any kind of other f uh, farming games because you have second and third level products. And so uh, it starts to take on complexity of some of these other Euros where you have this almost not really like a tech tree, but sort of. Uh, but you have these abilities to start converting products into level 2 and level 3 products. So you start having things like um, you, you have your cows, you can get milk. All right, that's cool. But later on, then you can start using that milk and you start putting it in with eggs and, and uh, flour or whatever. And you can start making desserts. So that's really, really awesome as well. And then we also have this market that comes through and we're we'll able to sell different things. And selling at the city is a rare opportunity to be able to do that. You make your money. And then you also have this rotating. Uh, this rotating uh, country uh, side market where different things are going to come out so you have different opportunities to do things. Overall, this is an outstanding, outstanding game. I like the fact that the, that halfway through things change. And you also have flexibility. You can choose to participate in the rodeos, but it may not necessarily be something that you want to do. In fact, in the rules, there's, you can play a simpler game where you're not even using that. And there's some variants in here, too, that are going to change up the game playing experience. But overall, this is an outstanding farming game, probably one of the best ones that I have played because it really encompasses this whole sense of agriculture and shows you the bigger picture of what's beyond the farm by being able to make those additional product um, levels. The game plays rather quickly and I also think that it's family friendly and it's certainly educational in getting a, a glimpse of uh, what kind of stuff is going on down in uh, South America with some of the products that are grown down there but then also getting an understanding of agriculture the big picture as we're moving off of the farm and making more and more products. So outstanding game. Uh, I know that this game is on Kickstarter right now, but it's something that you're interested in. I'll have a, a link in the video description below. You can check that out and uh, per, you know, go ahead and pledge that game and get your copy. All right, that's it for now. And join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table. Bye-bye.